We're looking at Revelation 17, although we haven't actually opened um, the Bible to get to those verses. There are certain uh, prerequisites you have to understand about developments that have taken place earlier in the book of Revelation before chapter 17 will make any sense. The same is true of Daniel 9. You have to understand certain things about Daniel 8 and Daniel 7 before Daniel 9 will make much sense. So when the angel comes down to talk to John about what he has been shown in vision, uh, the angel is talking about things that John has previously seen. And as I said in the previous segment, it's interesting to understand that the great prostitute that is described in Revelation 17 uh, has been introduced earlier in the story, but not by that name. Actually, the image to the beast and the prostitute are the same thing. We'll see that more clearly in our study as it unfolds today. When the devil changes from charming God to demonic dictator, that's the transition from the fifth trumpet to the sixth trumpet, there will be a great deal of consternation throughout the earth. The leaders of Babylon will be powerless to stop this. And the people of earth, what can they do about it? But mankind can't thwart the devil's authority, his goals, nor his objectives. And many will, in fact, go along because they believe that the devil is actually Almighty God. So whatever he wants is okay by them. When a one-world church state is set up, that constitutes a theocratic government because Lucifer declares himself to be God, and when God dwells among men, there is no room for religious or political diversity. Lucifer is Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and he can declare what is correct and true in terms of religion, as well as matters of politics. So a theocratic government is where God rules over man. And this is the kind of government that Lucifer will establish when he sets himself up to be God. Babylon's transition from a composite government to a theocratic government is described in Revelation 13. And we've talked about this a um, number of times. So when the devil orders the world to set up an image, um, what can the world do but obey? And many will believe that this is the will of God, and those that are in opposition uh, who refuse to worship and obey the laws of the theocratic government will have to be eliminated and that's what Revelation 13, 15 says. All who refuse to worship the image are to be killed. Rebellion cannot be tolerated. To make sure that uh, everyone understands that the devil means business and that everyone quickly conforms to his authority and to his theocratic government, the, dev the devil is going to kill a third of mankind. Let's go back to the computer screen. Lucifer's angels will be released to kill a third of mankind at an appointed time. And this killing will eliminate all resistance to Lucifer's theocratic government. It's very simple. Look at Revelation 9.15. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour, this very hour, day, month, and year. It's a punctiliar moment in time. This date has been scheduled. It's been scheduled for over 2,000, for 2000 years. This date when it arrives, this very hour, day, month, and year, the devil's angels will be released to kill a third of mankind. And the killing will not take place on one day. They are released at this time, but the killing will take a little while. 
This enormous purge of human life is scheduled. The appointed time has been set, and it will take a few weeks to purge earth of all resistance to Lucifer's theocratic government. The deadly purge in the sixth trumpet corresponds with two developments. The opening of the fifth seal, which is the wholesale martyrdom of God's people, and it corresponds with the implementation of the mark of the beast. Um, I'm looking for a chart here to show you how this alignment occurs so that you can see with your own eyes. Here we go. Let's go to camera two. There we go. Notice, here is the fifth seal down here at the bottom of your screen. Here is the sixth trumpet. And this is when the mark of the devil, mark of the beast, is imposed. And this is when the martyrdom of the saints occurs. And you can see we are just 222 days from the time of the seventh trumpet. This, the fifth trumpet is 148 days in length, and the sixth trumpet is 222 days in length. And this is where the fifth seal and the sixth trumpet align. The martyrdom begins, the killing of God's saints and prophets, and this is when the mark of the beast is imposed. And then the seventh trumpet is where mercy ends. Let me zoom out just a little bit more, and as you look at this, you can see that in the fifth trumpet, this is where the devil physically appears, and this is where he, uh, um, the first five months, he has the gentle and wonderful, benevolent um, and gracious God-like uh, deception, and here he becomes the tyrant in the sixth trumpet and demands that Babylon become a theocratic government with himself as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Okay, let's go back to the computer screen. During the sixth trumpet, <clears throat> a total of about 1.75 billion people will die. This will leave only about 3 billion people on earth. 1.75 billion die during the first four trumpets, and 1.75 billion die in the sixth trumpet. So this will leave about 3, 3.5 three billion people on earth at the time of the sixth trumpet. And about 2 billion people as I calculate this, will receive the mark of the beast. Two billion people will receive the mark of the beast. Millions of saints and most, if not all, of God's 144,000 prophets will eventually be killed during the sixth trumpet. And as I said earlier, the sixth trumpet will last for 222 days, and this is easy to determine by taking the 1260 days of the two witnesses, subtract 890 days uh, where the devil physically appears two-thirds of the way through the Great Tribulation, minus 148 days for the fifth trumpet, the five months of persecution, torment upon the non-religious, and you're left with 222 days. All of the non-religious people will be gone by the end of the sixth trumpet. Now, as I calculate the, the, this matter, and remember, I'm just offering some approximate numbers here because I don't know the actual numbers. I don't know what the actual population of Earth really is. Only God knows that number. Even those who study population are just making and offering estimates, reasonable estimates. But as I calculate this, there will be about five and a quarter billion people on earth at the time of the sixth trumpet. The devil will divide people of earth into groups of 1,000. 
for purposes of rations and administration. Food is going to be rationed. Food and water and the necessities of life, medicine, all things will be rationed. And in order to facilitate rationing, the people of earth will be divided up into groups of 1,000. I'll show you why I say that in just a minute. And the devil will then kill one-third of mankind, or about 1.75 billion people, and this will leave about 1 billion saints and about 2 billion wicked people alive. One-third, two-thirds. The wicked will be tattooed with the number 666 because that number is two-thirds of 1,000. In other words, they are spared and they have submitted to the theocratic government of the devil and they are allowed to live. And they wear the mark showing their submission is voluntary. They show they are in the two-thirds. That's why I say, because 666 is two-thirds of 1,000, that's why I say the devil will divide the people up into groups of 1,000 for purposes of administration and rations. In other words, by the time we reach the seventh trumpet, the world will be divided into two groups of people. The middle group, the non-religious, are all gone. One-third will be worshiping the lamb, and two-thirds will be worshiping the lamb-like beast. By now, I hope you understand that the image of the beast will be a unified theocratic form of Babylon, where Lucifer rules as king of kings and lord of lords. This theocratic government is also called the great prostitute in Revelation 17, because those who submit to Lucifer's one world church state will have to sell their souls to the devil in order to survive. That's why it's called the great prostitute. It's important to know that Jesus empowers the devil to set up a theocratic government. God enables the devil to do this so that the devil can eliminate the religious diversity that keeps some people from accepting the testimony of the 144,000. Here's a crucial step to keep in mind. Each trumpet judgment has been deliberately designed by a thoughtful and loving God to open the eyes of ignorant people to the truth about his love, his gospel, and his will. In other words, when the devil sets up his one world church state, his theocratic government, sincere but ignorant people will not be able to cling to their traditional leaders, beliefs, or churches any longer. People will not be allowed to follow after their trusted spiritual authorities anymore. Thus, anyone still hanging on to the religion of their forefathers, will be forced to make a tough decision because their religion and their religious traditions will be forbidden. You understand? Now, when the theocratic government is set up, there is no room for religious diversity any longer. Everyone has to leave their church. God does this intentionally, because so many people, bless their hearts, <laughs> ignorant people will hang on to their church as though it is their God. By eliminating their church, everyone then is forced to make a decision as to who will be their God. So at the time of the sixth trumpet, the options will be simple. Death or worship the devil. Join his church. Sell your soul to the devil. You can buy and sell. You can receive rations or death. By the time we reach the end of the 1260 days allotted to, allotted to the two witnesses, everyone will have been forced to abandon his church. All churches other than the new one world church state will be forbidden. 
the devil will eliminate all religious diversity. He sets himself up as the religious authority and the political authority of the whole world. Paul knew this, and this is why he wrote in 2 Thessalonians 2.4, The man of sin will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped. Notice, he will oppose everything that has to do with God. He exalts himself above everything that has to do with God or is worshipped. So that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. A lot of people use this verse to imply that the temple in Jerusalem will be built. Well, that's not what Paul means at all. God's temple is not a, a building in uh, Jerusalem. That, that building was destroyed by the Romans in A.D. 70, and it will never be rebuilt. It will not be rebuilt. Paul is saying that Lucifer will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God so that he sets himself up in God's dwelling place in each religion, proclaiming himself to be God. When Lucifer comes pretending to be God, he's not only the God of the Jews, he's not going to favor the Jewish uh, faith, he's not going to favor the Catholic faith, he's not going to favor any faith. Paul says he will oppose them all. He will be in opposition to them all. Here he's talking about the sixth trumpet. Of course, at the beginning, when he first gets here, he will appear to be embracing them all. But he suddenly changes character. He begins to speak like the dragon that he really is, and he will abolish all the nations of the world as well. And he will divide the world into ten geographical sectors. I think these geographical sectors will be determined by geographical boundaries, such as oceans and deserts. And he will appoint ten kings as puppet kings that will rule under him. And these ten kings, these ten horns, if you will, in Revelation 13, are the ten toes in Daniel 2. And the ten horns on the composite beast. So Lucifer's theocratic government is called the great prostitute because people will sell their souls to the devil for the sake of rations, food, clothing, medicine, money, survival. The government of Lucifer is called a prostitute because prostitutes are willing to exchange their moral integrity for material or financial gain. And this is why prostitution is an abomination to God, because God values moral integrity more than any material thing or financial gain. Remember, in heaven, the streets of heaven are paved with gold because there gold is worthless. <laughs> Prostitution is an abomination to God because God values moral integrity more than material or financial gain. So those who sell out to the devil for food and water are an abomination to God. And that's why Lucifer's theocratic government is called the great whore, the great prostitute. Disgusting abomination. Okay, well now that we've reviewed the big picture, I'm going to read through Revelation 17, and as we go along, I will make some comments. I just can't help myself. <laughs> All right, Revelation 17, 1. I bet you thought we'd never get to it. One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, come with me, John, and I will show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits upon many waters. So the angel arrived at John's side immediately after John saw Revelation chapter 16, which is the seven bowls, and immediately began talking about the punishment of the great prostitute. Now this is the first time the term, the great prostitute, is mentioned in the book of Revelation, but it is not the first time she is referred to. 
Notice how this term, the great prostitute, links up to the two witnesses. This might surprise you. Revelation 11, verse 8. Talking about the two witnesses, their bodies will lie in the street. Notice the word street is singular. Their bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. Did you notice that there's only one street in the great city? That's because Jesus said, enter through the narrow gate. Matthew 7, 13, for wide is the gate and broad is the street that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life and only a few find it. Verse 14. Do you remember rule three? Apocalyptic language can be literal, symbolic, or analogous. And to reach the intended meaning of a prophecy, the student must consider A, the context, B, the use of parallel language throughout the Bible, and C, relevant statements in the Bible that define the symbol if an element is thought to be symbolic. The reason I've done this, gone over this rule, is because the term, the great prostitute, is a symbolic term. Because the angel told John, a few verses later, that the prostitute is, quote, the great city. Revelation 17, 18, the woman you saw is the great city that rules over the kings of the earth. The whore is the great city. And the two witnesses, their bodies will lie in the street of the great city. The great city is the whore, the prostitute, the theocratic government. And the prostitute sits on many waters. Verse 15, then the angel said to me, the waters you saw where the prostitute sits are peoples, multitudes, nations and languages. What does this language mean? The prostitute is the great city that rules over the kings of earth, and she sits upon many waters. Well, what is this language telling us? In a sentence, this is what it means. Lucifer's theocratic government rules over the world and everyone in it. Revelation 17, verse 2. I'll say more about that in just a minute, but let's proceed with verse 2. With her, that is the great prostitute, the ten kings of the earth committed adultery, and the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. You remember this, was the, this is true of Babylon. This is also even true of, of the theocratic government, which the devil sets up. It, it, it's a continuing process of the same thing. With the prostitute, the kings of the earth committed adultery, just like the kings of the earth committed adultery with the composite beast. And the inhabitants of earth will be intoxicated with the wine of the prostitute's adulteries, just like they were with the wine of the adulteries of the composite beast. Now, the composite beast is not the great prostitute. In fact, she rides on the great composite beast. The great prostitute rides on the beast. We'll see that in just a minute. When the Bible says that the ten kings committed adultery with her, this means that Lucifer, the kings of earth, give Lucifer their civil powers to enforce religious behavior. That is adultery. It is the union of church and state. This is adultery. God always kept them separate and demands that they remain separate. But 
This is how they are brought together. Out of panic and fear to appease God, Babylon forms, and when the devil gets here, as God, he demands a theocratic government. So the ten kings commit adultery with the great whore. And they use their civil powers to enforce religious behavior. And the inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated with the wine of her adulteries. The intoxicating wine of her adulteries represents false doctrine, the false idea. The wicked have rejected truth. We know that uh, when Satan appears. In fact, this is why God sends the devil. They have re refused to love the truth and so be saved. They have rejected truth and righteousness, and they have chosen to submit to the devil's authority and hope for the best. They cannot think straight. They are totally deceived. They are totally intoxicated. Revelation 17, verse 3, Then the angel carried me away in the spirit into the desert, and there I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast. Now this is the composite beast that she's sitting on, the one in Revelation 13. She's sitting on this beast that was covered with blasphemous names. It's in opposition to the will of God, and it had seven heads and ten horns. Now the woman was dressed in purple and scarlet, was glittering with gold, precious stones and pearls. Oh, she's beautiful to look at. She held a golden cup in her hand, filled with abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. It's a, a, a contrast in terms. Beautiful, rich, and dressed well, with gold and precious stones and pearls, highly desirable as a woman, but totally vile and disgusting as a prostitute. She held a golden cup in her hand filled with the abominable things and the filth of her adulteries. And this title was written on her forehead, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of prostitutes and of the abominations of the earth. Wow. It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it's uh, interesting that she's described as so beautiful and alluring, and yet she is so disgusting and vile. Because that's the way the devil works. The devil knows our love for beauty. He knows our attraction to beauty. When Eve saw that the fruit was beautiful, and the serpent talking to her was the most beautiful creature of all. She took the fruit and did eat. And oh, the penalty that's followed. The devil's, he is one sophisticated cookie. <laughs> and he will eat your lunch if you're not careful. And he's going to deceive the world and he's going to take the world into destruction. And we're going to talk about that in just a few moments. We'll see you in the next segment. May God bless you, is my prayer.